Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And today, things are doing bad. You might say it's a perspective thing, but I, I think we mostly agree that 8% down in the markets is bad. And this wasn't even it. No, because this is not refreshed. This is basically yesterday when things were at 36,000 and things were not looking so good. Or I think it might have been a day and a half ago or something like that already. But if I refresh, yeah, that's where things are at. Today, we're down 8.5%. Bitcoin is at 31.7 thousand, and it actually just crashed to 31. A lot of my friends are opening up crazy long positions right now, all the way down to about $27,500. And what that means is they're opening up a trade, basically predicting that the price is going to be going up from one of these points. And the reason that's possible is because they do it with leverage, but the liquidation point is, let's say, about 24 or maybe even 25000 or so. And if you're buying your way down, it might become even a little bit lower. But I'm honestly saying, guys, be very careful with whatever you do right now. BNB is down 12%, XRP is down 10%, Solana is down 15%. It's buy season. The only question is, should we do it with leverage or just normal buys? I'm doing everything on Bybit, so it doesn't matter too much, uh, but I'm just letting you guys know. Bybit is the exchange I personally use. But before we move on, quick little disclaimer. We are running a 2500 XRP giveaway right now. And if you want to enter, all you have to do is make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed, and make sure you comment something down below, or just go to the link down below, and fill out any one of these things. You can you can do all of them if you want, or just one of them. It is just the way to enter. It's, it's very simple. Just go ahead and check it out. A link is down below. The winners are going to be picked in five days, and I'll post them online. So make sure you join. All right. So to move on, what has to be said is that Bitcoin is not really moving in a way that we wouldn't expect. I described to you guys before the dollar has been doing pretty well, and the S and P and Nasdaq have been falling. And every single time that those indices fall. Bitcoin falls as well. At least it's been that way for a pretty good while. And so what we're seeing right now is the S&P is down 2.6%, Nasdaq is down 3.3%, and Bitcoin down 66 I would say that's within margin, though, of what we've seen in the recent past, and it's not really too strange. Also, a lot of people have been quoting that Bitcoin is back down to numbers of all the way back in July or something of 2021. But if we check out the S&P, it's back to levels of May of 2021, purely because of this crazy decli uh, decline in price that we have had. One thing we should quickly mention is that in times like this, I'm not really panicking because I understand what I'm holding and I'll definitely be holding on for the longer period of time. I don't really sell either. If you wanted to sell, I think you should always do that when you're in profit, when things are looking good. And even though theoretically speaking, I'm still in a lot of profit, I'm still doing good. Uh, I'm, I'm talking more about selling at the top. So selling, for example, 60,000, 65 or 69 for Bitcoin or some of those higher prices for any other crypto really. Um, right now, I don't, just don't think it's worth it. It's the same thing as basically selling your XRP at 20 cents, 19 cents, whatever, because the all time high was at $3. Even selling at $1, I don't think is really very much worth it. But it just depends on how good you are at expecting or predicting the future, I guess, right? If you really know it properly, when the price is going to start pumping again, you have a really good idea. Okay, or, or when it's going to start dumping, but most of the time you don't, uh, most of the time you don't know when the cycle is going to switch over. Which is why what I like to focus on is buying altcoins that matter, altcoins that have longevity. One of them being XRP. And I think, I think that a lot of people are overly critical about it, overly negative. When in reality, I think the mission is quite good. The idea is quite good. And the execution has been awesome. Uh, there's some regulatory troubles, but I think that, of course, is like a hurdle. There's a couple of other ones I think are juicy, though, guys. And I keep sharing them over on my channel. And even though this is not financial advice, I honestly expect that if we're buying things out there which have real utility... Usually, you can't go wrong over longer periods of time. Uh, Aluna is a great example of that. I personally think Polygon is really extremely good for what they do as well. Uh, but there's a whole list of these coins. And I have a discussion with some YouTubers, some crypto guys. They say it's better to just hold five crypto rather than 10 or 20. I personally on the other side. And his explanation was, and this is one of my good friends, crypto guru, really, really smart man when it comes to making money in that sense. But I think we agree on or a lot of points. One thing we disagree upon is having or how many coins you should be having. I think it's a good discussion because I personally think if you have five coins, he, he, he explains that way, if one of them pumps, 
you're actually making a lot of money. And if you have a portfolio of 20 coins, and even if one does really crazy, you're not really getting ahead too much. If you had $3,000, you have 10 coins worth 300 bucks. If one pumps, the severity is a lot less than you know if you um, only had a couple to spread it over. But I like to kind of think about it the different way. If you put all your eggs into one or just a couple of baskets, there's a higher chance you're actually going to get sort of screwed or the other way around. If none of those coins actually pump, I mean, the more coins you have, the higher of a likelihood that one of them is going to pop off. So I would say the smaller you make your basket, the higher the likelihood that you'll miss everything. So not no pumps, no dumps but you're being more on the extreme side. If something does go well or if something does go wrong, you're affected quite heavily, which people with a higher risk profile, I think, prefer. Um, but then again, you might also miss out on every single move and your coins might do nothing. And the broader you make your portfolio, the more susceptible you are to any move in the market, upside or downside. But that's also what I prefer because you don't know which sector is going to pop off next, right? Right now, we're seeing a crazy drop in cryptos, which is why I honestly always say to people, Get some other sectors too. If real estate is your thing, depends on how wealthy you are, how much money you have to spend, how much money you're looking to invest with. But if real estate is your thing, if watches are your thing, if stocks and indices are your thing, well, I guess indices and crypto move in similar fashion, so that might not be the best diversification. But watches, as an example that I just gave, real estate, it, it can definitely be so. Even if you're a Forex investor for the short term, basically a trader, but we could still call it investor, I think. If that's what you think works the best, don't let this idea of, of crypto being the best thing haunt you or, or stop you from doing that because it's all about, I would say, maximizing your profit potential while minimizing the risk. And sometimes it's best done by just crazy diversification. There's actually a couple of pieces of news I really want to quickly share in this video as well. But before we move on, if you enjoy these daily crypto videos, make sure you press that like button because it helps out a ton. So Mark Zuckerberg said Instagram will start testing NFTs this week to help creators display and make money from the digital artwork. So one of the craziest announcements in a very long while. I might not sound as crazy enthusiastic about it, but I am. And that's mostly because we're now really seeing that regardless of price, utility is prospering, it's going on, and the crypto space is getting more and more intertwined with this real, um, I guess, space, with, the, with the, the normal traditional tech space. Obviously, Facebook is not the best example, but I think Google getting into Web3, as we described before, uh, Twitter already getting into NFTs now, Instagram getting into NFTs, it, it's starting to kind of develop a little bit further. Uh, this is one speculatory article that I just read. Terra Luna's Foundation Guard dumps $750 million worth of Bitcoin. A very heavy title. Came out like a couple minutes ago. Yeah, literally 40 minutes ago, I think it came out. Amidst the ongoing attempt to build a $10 billion reserve for its native stablecoin USD, Terra is looking to offload some of the acquired assets. It said here, the LFG attempted to downplay this dumping by calling it a loan to OTC trading firms. Terra's founder stated that he sold assets would eventually be repurchased, and Luna, affected by the broader market bearish queues, has declined by 12% in 24 hours. So this is a very scary thing, but it depends on what the real thought behind it was, and we're not going to get that. It says here, a couple of hours ago, Terra, Luna's foundation guard, announced that due to uncertain macro conditions across the market, they have pushed the foundation into selling about $750 million worth of Bitcoin from its treasury, which is extremely bullish. Again, take this with a grain of salt as it's a little bit deeper than that. And it's hard to say what the thoughts were or how exactly it, it, it works. If you guys get my drift, I mean, they could be speaking the exact truth, meaning they're just really planning to look uh, or buy back. But there's some backers which won't allow for it. And you've got to remember, it's not one person's choice most of the time. It's a very big business and $750 million, um, as we also described with MicroStrategy before, it's a crazy amount of money to get from somewhere or to put into something. So they described this action by labeling it a loan to an OTC trading firm in order to protect the UST peg and said that they would eventually loan another $750 million UST to buy back this old Bitcoin when the market conditions normalize. So... That's an extremely bearish sign, and I don't like to read that. Further explaining the move, rela relative to Terra USD, has experienced notable directional flow over the weekend, accompanied by similar volatility in both Luna and Bitcoin. While this flow has currently evened out, it is prudent to prepare for a potential future volatility. Per the LFG mandate, the LFG will proactively defend the stability of the USD peg and broader Terra economy, especially under volatile and uncertain conditions uh, on the macro field in legacy markets. So. Yeah, I'm not too happy to read that. Uh, there's been a crazy amount of liquidations as well. Did you guys read about that? I think I posted it a little bit earlier. And I've been posting it over on Twitter. Ooh, 
I don't have it open anymore, unfortunately, but just trust me when I say that right now, there are a crazy amount of liquidations. I think it's about $700 million worth or so over the last 24 hours, and I've been putting that over on Twitter. So if you guys are into that type of news, make sure you follow me over on Twitter. I, I also think that I could cover a lot of this positive news of it, demand increases and so, but it's, it's not really believable as much. And even if I talk about utility now, I think what everybody's looking at is just the price, the price, the price, the price. So I kind of want to keep it short here. I kind of want to keep it more core, key, everything that's, that's very important just to have um, an update on. A couple of things I guess I should quickly show. This one is just really interesting and I think it's on story. Not an inflation hedge. Bitcoin showing close correlation with stocks, says Bank of America analyst. This was the 8th of May, so this was already, I believe, yesterday, right? I'm not sure what the date is today. 9th of May, so yeah. Uh, I didn't show it because I was planning to make a video, but I didn't. Yet again, the story is quite clear. The correlation is there, and I've described it to you guys a thousand times before. Until people start to see Bitcoin for what it is instead of a speculatory asset that is akin to just putting your money into it, waiting a couple of years and getting it back out, that's a different thing than what the purpose is, guys. If you remember... Bitcoin, just buying Bitcoin and forgetting that, that what a lot of people preach. I personally think that's what keeps people in the same stock market notion. Because if you're buying it with the idea of just looking back at it in a couple of years, what people think about is basically like a savings account. So you put some in it and you grab back out when you need the money, basically. Or you grab back out when you want to buy something, really. That's kind of the same thing that people do with indices, right? They put their money into it, you know, whatever they don't really need. In the same sense as they save, basically, but then invest. And whenever they do need the money, they grab it back out. So whenever things go down, they might grab it back out because they're too afraid. And you might say, yeah, but that's the whole idea of holding on, not selling. Yeah, but if they need it or if they get scared or if the, the market becomes worse, then they might want to get access to that money. Which is at the end of the day, as I described to you guys with the interest rate, if the interest rate goes up, people are more prone to save their money in savings account or so, less susceptible to spending and, and giving out and such. But it's turning the economy around a little bit because if there's less spending, people are less excited for the future because market grows a little bit less. And if things grow less, at the end of the day, even though people are saving more, what you're, what you're normally starting to see is price of stocks falling. I think Bitcoin can kind of come in the same uh, sense. But that's, I guess, where the discrepancy might lie. Because at that point, crypto might also turn back around. Because if people start saving more. They might invest more in it, but the market turns down. So stocks have like this little middling ground, but ultimately fall. Bitcoin might kind of pick up at that point, but we shall see how it goes. That was it for right now. Just a quick look on everything that's going on. Uh, honestly, I'm not too sure the price is going to come back down further. I don't want to be that guy who claims, no, but here's really when it's going to turn around or so. Let's wait and see, all right? Uh, at the end of the day, I am buying a ton of altcoins but mostly Bitcoin actually right now, right, 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 right now as we speak. Mostly because the price is down so significantly from the all-time high that I think it's worth it, right? Ethereum is not as low as I would have expected, but I just got myself one ETH about five minutes ago. Just to kind of put a little bit of money into ETH as well, um, as it's, it's still pretty cheap relatively to where it was a couple weeks ago. So, yeah, I got to stack up. Got to stack up even harder because soon the prices will pump like crazy again and I'll regret not buying more. So, yeah, that was it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today.